Let me continue the discussion on South Africans for Gaza. And um, in this discussion, I want to address um, who really is behind South Africa going to the International Court of Justice to lay a charge of genocide against Israel. Now, this is just more speculation, but it is, I would call it intelligent speculation. Speculation based on a history of dealing with these players, um, being involved in a South African struggle against apartheid, having really immersed myself in understanding global Zionism and also how imperialism functions in the world. And so I would say this is an intelligent kind of speculation. And I'm not offering you any proofs. You might want to go and dig further and confirm or disconfirm what I'm telling you, but this is the hunch, this is the suspicion that I have what is going on here. You know, South Africa itself, the South African government, the African National Congress is not a party that has a great deal of um, courage to undertake such a big move. I mean, that is just, for anyone who is in South Africa, we know that they are party who is pretty much a middle-of-the-road party trying to be a broad church, trying to be all things to all people, never offending any section of the population and often ending up of offending every section of the population. So it's not a party of big moves, that I can tell you. If, if you're a South African, you know the, the African National Congress, the ruling party. They are a, a try to please them all party, and mostly they try to please themselves, to, to stuff their own pockets, many of them, not all. So that, the, the, it, I cannot see them as a, as a party with that kind of deep principles that would um, have taken on this case, although they're the government of South Africa. Now, point to make here is that some of the members of the South African legal team, in fact, are not very favorably disposed towards the South African government. Look, they did send a minister there, um, Ronald Lamola, um, who kind of like um, stumbled his way across his words in making a few intelligent comments there. He's the young guy, the African, you know, black African guy who spoke at The Hague. And um, he's an ANC member, the ruling party, and he's a minister in the government of South Africa. But the, the really brains within that um, group were not in f at all favorably disposed towards the ruling party. And I can tell you, if you read up on the history of Adila Asim, if you read up on Dekhang Moseneke, the judge that South Africa put there, he comes from a from a different tradition. It doesn't come from the same tradition as the ruling party, right? We have in South Africa dissenting parties who are also black, but not at all very favorable towards the ruling party. The ruling party is seen by many, including myself, as a, as a, as a, as a habitual sellout and a compromiser with imperialism. And um, we've just become accustomed to it over the years. And my brother, one brother I used to call them the comrades with the Mercedes. <laughs> the comrades, the, the comrade is in the Mercedes Benz cars. And that, that gives you a beautiful image of who the ruling party in South Africa is. They are the comrades in the Mercedes and in the BMWs. And um, so what is happening here? Who is really there? Because, uh, you know, until very recently, South Africa still sold arms to Israel, you know, small arms, pistols, and I think ammunition also. South Africa has, uh, uh, manufactures a few long-range artillery pieces at its... Uh, South Africa has a, has a well-functioning arms industry, which is one of the profitable parastatal industries in South Africa, going back to the days of white rule. So South Africa manufactures a very efficient uh, anti, sort of what is it called, personnel um, vehicles or, or, or personnel carriers, um, transport 
carriers. I'm, I'm not. I'm trying to get to the word, but I, the words. So I think South Africa has, has has a very effective arms industry, and they for a long time supplied Israel. South Africa has not just broken off the relationship, even the ANC after the change the, the, the ruling party. So what is going on here? Who's doing it? Who's 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 leading or who is who's instigating this position of South Africa? This is my thought. Right? If I look at the players, the ANC always had a very strong anti-Zionist Jewish intelligentsia in its midst. Because the ANC early on in its history, I want to take a guess quickly and I would say around about the 1930s, the ANC went into an alliance with the South African Communist Party. Now, the South African Communist Party in the 1930s was a party of whites, of whites mainly, right? The SACP was a party of whites, right? They were they drew inspiration from the uh, October Revolution in 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 Russia um, in the 1917 October Revolution, and uh, many of them under influence of that revolution and uh, following. Uh, sort of creation of the Soviet Union and of the international communist, uh, uh, you know, conferences that were held in Europe. Many of them became activists in South Africa, but they were wh- they were whites. They were traditionally whites, and quite a large number of them were Jewish. Right. So you had you have in the ANC a a, a very small but very influential Jewish communist um, intelligentsia, right? a, 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 a thinking elite, very, very powerful, very revolutionary in terms of socio-economic uh, vision for South Africa, but also, as I say, Jewish anti-Zionists. Here's my guess, and obviously there is a global anti-Zionist Jewish network. There is there is a growing anti-Zionist Jewish global fraternity, which I have a great deal of respect for. I mean, I I find that any person that is part of a a minority that is prepared to go against its own established norms, I have a great deal of respect for them, because in many ways I'm, I'm sitting in that position. I'm criticizing and evaluating or revising a lot of Muslim um, false assertions, beliefs, um, ideas that Muslims are defending that I feel completely outraged and opposed to. So that's why I have respect for these anti-Zionist Jews. And in America, I think more than any other country, there's a there's so many podcasts now, so many successful podcasts of Jewish podcasters who are effectively selling the idea of anti-Zionism to the to the youth, to the younger generation of Jews. And um, I am of the belief, and of course you have people like, uh, who's that guy in Europe, that Jewish guy that was involved with the Nazis, um, I can't get to his name, I think he's from Romania, but the name will get to me. He's also kind of like um, anti-Israel, right? Um so, 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 which means there is a growing and a a a, a well-funded global network of anti-Zionist Jews. You see, there were always anti-Zionists. There were always anti-Zionists, right? Hitler, oh, I don't know, Hitler was an anti-Zionist, but South Africa generally, or Africa in general, is is largely anti-Zionist in terms of the opposition to cult, to the Western culture, to the norms that are being imposed on on Africa. So Africa is largely anti-cultural imperialism and anti-Zionist to some extent. But the emergence of a a very strong, resourced Jewish anti-Zionist bloc, and we've always known that there there were Jews that were anti-Zionist, the Nature Karte, based in New York and also present in the UK and in South Africa, some 
I've always been very proud. We've we've always been very proud of standing with the Naturei Karte, who is an anti-Zionist traditionalist Jewish group. My speculation is that you know, and this is just you can call it what you like. Is it the subjective statement? But I think Jews have always been ready to make the big moves. I believe that that is something very deeply entrenched in Jewish, in the Jewish psyche. It is. It, some people refer it to. It's a word that they use called chutzpah. And I believe that the the Jew and I have many friends and I have associates and professional associations with Jewish people. And I, the one thing I can, as we call it, take our hat off to is that. The chutzpah, the the ability, the propensity to say something or do something that is radically challenging to the existing um, understanding or, or, or community. And um, I want to advance the idea. I want to propose that the big move of taking. Israel to the Hague is really under the influence of that force. I believe we have the Jewish anti-Zionist camp, and some of them are good, some of them's intentions are not that good, right? So, I mean, there are anti-Zionist Jews who are purely approaching this from a pragmatic position. Even some big businesses in America um, who have seen that the writing is on the wall, the globe is shifting, the power of on this planet is shifting from the east to the west, and to get the west in any shape or form to be favorably disposed to you and your big business, you need to um, ameliorate the relations and the ties with countries like Iran, like the Arabs, like uh, even China, because China cannot be separated from the Arabs and from Iran. China is is joined at the hip with the Muslim world, and there's no China, there's no great China without China being at least in a comfortable, constructive relationship with the Muslim world. I mean, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, the, the, the China is. And, and the same with Russia. Russia has got twenty percent of its population, I believe, is Tatars, uh, Chechnyans, ethno, uh, ethnically Turk, Turkomans, Turkomans people. And Russia the same. There's no Russia without it being in a good relationship with Muslims, because of all the Turkish speakers or the Turkic people within the borders of Russia. Or then there's also the native Russians, the Tatar people which is like right there at Mos- near to Moscow. So both China and Russia are, have to find a way of working with the Muslims, or at least not getting into, the, into trouble with the Muslims, whether it's Arabs, Turks, Persians, uh, Indians, or subcontinent um, Arabs, whether it's the Malaysians, whether it's the Indonesians. And for that reason, that section of Jewish global Jewry, I believe, has, has, has jumped ship from the Zionist ship. And they, have, they, 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 they are ready to abandon Israel. That is my speculation, my friends. Now go and test it, go and see if I could be right or wrong. But I believe that that is what we are witnessing here. Now, that is an extremely powerful and intelligent movement. It is more powerful than the Arab anti-Israeli movement, than BDS, than um, any sort of global Muslim solidarity, even Iran, even, you know, Iran and Hezbollah are with great, you know, with, I, have, I have affinity, respect for them. But the public relations is not their st- strong. It's it's not their strength. You know, millet, on the on the battlefield is where they where they shine. But on the battlefield of ideas and opinions, that is where global jury really shines. And I believe that this move by South Africa to challenge Israel at the International Court of Justice is very very strongly motivated by that section of global jury. And um, 
I'm very, I'm very glad. I'm very excited that it has happened. I'm, I'm absolutely cheering South Africa on in the Hague, and I respect the ANC no matter how it came. You know that they are the ones that are now the face of uh, anti, uh, of, of legally challenging Israel. But I'm very happy for this development. But you know, as a man of of, of God, of as a man of the Scriptures, as a man of of of, of divine. Interven- who understands and admits to divine intervention. It is always the case where interests shift. And when interests, global interests, shift, that the evil or that the enemy becomes marginalized. And so for me to admit to these forces, whether they are good or dubious, coming together to ex- to ex- to expel this cancerous phenomenon from the Middle East and from the world, I'm I'm very happy that it emerges like that. That is what is called social emergence. It is the way society improves. It is the conflict that takes place, and out of the conflict emerges a better situation, a better society. And that, my friends, is really how I see this move at The Hague and why so, so in a previous video I explained to you why South African society and in this video I'm just saying that that is really what I believe and I think they will win I think South Africa will win because those forces are very powerful and they've put together a very good case and they've enlisted the right people to advance that case and I think it is the first real nail in the coffin of Zionist Israel when Israel is declared a, a, a state in the process of committing a genocide, I think that is going to be the first big nail in the coffin. They will never recover from that. And they are they are touched by history or they are tapped on the shoulder by history to enter the garbage bin of history. That is what I honestly believe. And those and we will see an emergence of an anti Zionist Judaism in the next few decades. Judaism, I think, will survive. It will survive. It must survive. It survived for 4,000 years. It's a, you know, it's a community that has got very, very powerful, strong, ingrained values and principles. And, But I believe they would have cleansed themselves of the scourge in the next few decades.